All right, hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to put out a video here. I haven't done this in a long time, uh, showing off the items that I found at the Goodwill bins. It was just absolute chaos uh, this afternoon, or tonight, or whatever you want to call it. Just chaos. Um, one of the things is that, um, you know, uh, if you're a vintage clothing collector, some of the bins, you just can't get in there. You just can't get in there. And um, it just uh, grab everything and get out of there. Fill up a cart or two and then look through it later and see if you got anything. And that's really a difficult way to shop. But, you know, it's funny because a lot of people have been throwing clothes back into the merchandise, what they call the hard goods. And um, it's just kind of uh, frustrating. And they do that so they don't have to look at it twice or, you know, that sort of thing. So I got a couple of pieces of clothing, nothing outstanding, but one was autographed. It's kind of interesting to have an autographed piece of clothing. Very, very crazy to do that. Uh, the other thing is I've been trying to focus on usable things or things I can repurpose, and so I was able to meet up with one of my friends and give him a whole carload of broken stuff and, and uh, a bunch of old wood scraps I had no use for. And he said, oh yeah, we just use everything. Um, but I did find this really cool bag of dice here, tons of dice. I forget what it was. It was not called Dice Mania, but there was some game that was filled with all kinds of dice of every single kind. So I just grabbed what I thought was the coolest dice and then bought that. It cost me about $7 for everything, just about $7. Um, some people say it's not really worth a whole lot uh, to do that. If I was to sell these dice on their own, you know, because uh, these are not cheap. I don't know what they're, like 50 cents a dollar a, d a die, or something like that. I don't know what they cost here. So that's kind of cool. So that would make my money back if, if I sold all of those. I found this cool book, Asterix and the Great Divide. Um, this is the first one I have in English. Uh, usually it's in some sort of other language, but uh, this is from 1980. And somebody threw it back because they didn't know what Asterisk, Asterix was. So I, I think it's pretty cool here. It's in really very good condition. Um, but there were just people loading up all their carts with just far as the eye can see of merchandise. I don't know how they even are able to get through all of that. I just really don't understand. Uh, anytime I see cards from, uh, uh, playing cards from a casino I don't have, here's a Siena Hotel and Casino. I just only wanted one or two of them. I just grabbed one. I have a small binder, no shocker there, of um, playing cards. Not my hotel key cards, but uh, um, playing cards here. Um, so I didn't have this one. I should have grabbed an extra one, but I just grabbed a random eight of hearts there. Nothing special there. And let's just show you a couple of the other things I grabbed here. Big pile of stuff here. Um, uh, uh, ephemera paper stuff here. I found one photograph. This is a superintendent of some school. I don't know. The reason why I took it from the book that it was there is because uh, somebody had already taken some of the pictures out. It was too bad. It was really a neat book there, but unfortunately it was a neat homemade book that somebody made. Um, but uh, somebody just thought it would be better to just uh, take some of the pictures out of it than keep the whole book. It's only going to cost $2.29 or two seventy nine for the book. Um, but anyway, here's a San Diego Zoo postcard. Many of these I will just trade away or find some other use for. Um, here's a few other ones. Some frogs and, and a sea otter and a, an eagle. Uh, here's Salem, Oregon. Another Salem, Oregon postcard. Columbia River Gorge. Sorry for the glare there. Mount Hood. Another Mount Hood. I've, I give away so many postcards it's not even funny, but I keep telling people if they want any, they're certainly welcome to. There's the Oregon Coast. While I'm at Valley, some place in uh, San Francisco, California. I pretty much grab all the postcards because they're so cheap. You know, a cent or two, might as well. There's the Multnomah Falls National Forest right there. Mount Hood National Forest. And then there's that same one with the frogs, the eagle on the... Uh, this one here is the Yosemite Valley. Uh, some of those I might be able to find some surrounding areas. Uh, here's the Yosemite Ma National Park. I pretty much got everybody I can around those particular areas. Here's a Oregon Mount Bachelor. I think this was a hot top big postcard at one time. There are cooler ways to die. I don't know. I may, I may use that one. This has been sitting so long that the sticker on there left a... That's the original color of the postcard. I don't know what happened here. It turned pink or something like that. Very, un, very, very unusual. So I may or may not use that. We shall see. Then there's Columbia River, and uh, here is a postcard of some sort of Canadian uh, Save the Spirit Bear. Very, very flimsy piece of paper postcard there. You could do that. Uh, so there's that. And then I ended up with a whole pile of um, note cards. I didn't mean to, but there was just so many envelopes and cards. I couldn't look through all of them, but I tried to grab all the postcards. These I'll just write letters on, so that's very, very handy. So those don't go to waste. So there is the that pile there. 
and the ever popular envelopes because for TTMs if I ever get back to doing those and what have you I just grabbed a great mountain of envelopes and I like the larger ones because sometimes you know uh, celebrities and athletes send back four by sixes and other things that don't usually fit in the other envelopes there and also these work for some of these slightly larger pieces of ephemera like this here see that would not fit in a regular business envelope so it's a very practical thing it was like I said seven or six dollars and fifty odd cents or whatever so I just went ahead and spent it bought two shirts which I found in the reject pile the leftovers this one says annex Jim, I don't know what Annex Jim is, Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Um, I can't read the uh, copyright date. It almost looks like 97. Um, but this company that made it, uh, Raven Screens, has been around since 1988. But I think it's what they call a single stitch t-shirt because it has like a single line here and, um, and a single collar stitch or something like that. The reason why somebody threw it back is because a tag was removed. So unfortunately the tag was removed but I figure hey if it doesn't fit I don't really care and all only problem with that is there's one little bleach spot on the sleeve somewhere I can't don't know where that is but there's a, ton, a small uh, right there there's a bleach spot right there but I'm not worried about that you know I just cannot fight all the people for the vintage shirts now this is the cool one but I don't know if I'm gonna display it or wear it or what I'm gonna do with it but this is from an event and somebody threw it back here. This is the Do Action Sports Tour, so it's already pretty cool. Um, I don't know what year that's from. I haven't figured this one out yet. There's a tag there. It's been sitting somewhere for a long time because I think there was some uh, fading on the on the top here. So somebody might have had it hand, in a hanger or something like that. Don't really know. So I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to wash this shirt because it's got a couple of autographs on here. So that's Paul Rodriguez and his little logo or whatever that. I think somebody said that might be Birdhouse. I'm not sure what that is, uh, or Paul Rodriguez is. Uh, and then there's another one here, which I cannot figure out here. This is uh, Jenny Rogers or something like that. I'm not sure. Or Jenny, uh, I don't know, I can't read that. It looks like Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, and then somebody. Um, I'll have to look that one up there and see. DVS, a uh, guy told me that was a skateboard uh, company. So that's very, very cool to get Paul uh, Rodriguez and Jenny somebody rather on the, on the shirt there. That's very, very cool. And like I said, everything cost me just under $7 for all that. So I have lots of supplies here. And I forgot to show, but I grabbed a bag of postage stamps at another local thrift store for $2. I'm just going to see what's in there. I don't think I'm going to get my postage back on that. But it's just kind of fun to see what I have there. Um, maybe, I don't know, I wished I had shown that. But it, it just, they had a bunch of bags of, of stamps. One of them was like 20 used postage stamps for like $3 or $2. I don't remember what it was. And one of those like little kind of stamp holders that you get from a, a collector's thing. You know, a little uh, envelope with stamps in it. And I can tell you that um, not, instead of $2, $2 value of stamps, it's probably worth like, I don't know, 15 cents or something like that. Because most, you know, 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s postage stamps have absolutely zero value outside of, you know, a spot that they fill in the book um, on crafting. But you can't really do much with it. If it was 50 cents, I might have grabbed it, and then I could have done something with it or gifted it away as a, as a part of a care package. But that's what I can find at the Goodwill Bins. Again, if you've never been there, it's utter chaos. There's people that are dismantling things to make them cheaper, people taking parts off of other things, people filling their cards, people following around other people around the store watching to see if they're going to throw stuff back. People are in there offering other people. It's like, I don't want this anymore. Would you like to take it? I hate to see it go in the trash. And these are all people that are hoarding and saving stuff. They don't want to see anything get thrown away. So it's absolutely insanely crazy. Very, very crazy. And it opens at 8 o'clock in the morning, at least this one here, and closes at 7 o'clock at night. So you have plenty of opportunity to get there and get out. And they rotate the merchandise numerous times of the day. So there's people that live very close, and they'll come back three and four times during out the entire day. It's absolutely insane. And the parking lot is almost always nearly full. Usually 75% is about the best you can do. And there's people that wait sometimes an hour before the store opens to get there. But as uh, but I'd always point out is that this bins is one of the the most expensive bins. 
and it also has some of the least amount of stuff because everything gets pulled everything really great gets pulled for their online ventures and some for some of the larger stores or what have you so that's really all I have for today let me know what you think about the stuff I got if you know who Jenny somebody is I could probably figure that out due to her and then type in Jenny and then I will uh, I might even post that at the end of the video but thank you for watching